but let's just see if I get any armor. So every time I turn these in, I'm gonna get experience. I'm, God, I might hit level six. That would be weird if I hit level six just from doing turn-ins, because then it's like, what am I making a video about? I'm trying to do one video per level, but that's not a video anyone's gonna watch, like a two minute video of me turning in bone chips. I, I actually don't think I have enough. <gasps> there we go. Okay, so I finally got some armor. I actually don't think I have enough bone chips to get level two, but we'll see. Or whatever, six. Okay, so way more than twice as heavy, but also twice as much armor class. They're an upgrade. They're heavy as hell. They're called tattered for a reason. They suck, basically, but they are technically an upgrade, so I'll take them. Now, you can get some other good stuff, like you can get the chest piece from this guy. I think you can get a lantern, too. <gasps> Boots! What's that all about? Okay, let's see what they look like. Because this is the first time I've, I've seen a female gnome, really, equipping. Oh, come on. Okay. Ooh! -hoo -hoo -hoo. Look at those. Oh, those look really sweet. Okay. That is really cool. Oh, and I forgot to even look all this time. I'm getting faction here. Okay, clerics of the underfoot. So, if I turn in enough of these, it's a total bug that they say. I called for the remains. That's what they're supposed to say if you only turn in like three or one or two. Um, and then he also starts turning in those, completing that quest, battling the undead. It also triggers the second quest here, which I would like to do one day, but it might be Brothroyless only. I'll have to look into it. It's for later, though. Uh, Miner's Guild 249 is the rogue guild that we ran by earlier. Kazan Stormhammer? I'm thinking that's the Warrior Guild, maybe? And then Clerics of Underfoot is, is this guild. The, the, oh, actually, no, Clerics. Clerics of Underfoot is the Cleric Guild. This guy is a Paladin, right? Yeah, tells me to get lost because I'm not a Paladin if I try to train with him. But he'll gladly accept my bone chips. Okay, so let's keep going and see what else we can get from this guy. I don't think it's going to ding me level 6 here. But, um... <gasps> the chest piece! Okay, we gotta see what that looks like. Oh, huge upgrade visually. Now, that stupid little fanny pack I'm wearing looks all the more obvious. I gotta get the pants. But, wow, that looks so much better. I mean, look at that provocative top. Wow. Wow. This has been so worth it. All those bone chips I was saving up all the time, all that stress about, can I even turn them in? All been worth it. And the way that you get one when you have a stack instead of having to go through this stupid screen is you press control and you touch the button. <gasps> the helmet. Okay. Obviously, we gotta see what this helmet looks like. Now, I often find leather helmets look bad. So let's see. Let's see how good or bad this looks. It looks different on every race class. Uh, every race gender combo. Oh. Eh, you know what? I kind of like it. It kind of suits my character. She looks she looks silly, but, uh, you know, you gotta be a little silly to pick a gnome in the first place. I kind of like it. I kind of like it. Um, oh no, you know what? I think I do have enough to hit level 6 now that I look at how much I have left. And I don't want to do that. I mean, I do, but I don't. That's just such a waste of a video. Um, I really want to get my spells, obviously, for level 5. Okay, that's useless. I can't use that. I can't use one-hand slash weapons as a cleric. I can only use one-hand blunt, two-hand blunt. It's a crappy weapon anyway. Well, actually, it's the same as mine. It's 428. Damn, I, I do have enough to level. Um, yeah, I might just split this up into two videos. Why not? But I'm also not getting any, like, skill from this, you know? Like, my, my one-hand blunt isn't going up, my offense isn't going up. Oh, look at this, I'm about to ding. This is crazy. Like I said, this this uh, bone chip quest, if you're new to the game, do this bone chip quest. Gloves now. Oh yeah, huge upgrade. Um, oh, oh, what's going on here? Okay, I'm, I'm probably gonna ding on this next turn in, so let's, let's just do this. I mean, we might as well, it'd be stupid for me to not turn these in. Okay, I didn't even look what my health was before I cast that, but I, as a YouTube video, you can just rewind and see how much better I got my armor class and my... Okay, so 113 slash 105. We're about to ding again, which is insane. Um, okay, I'll be level 6, but we're kill. I, I just... I didn't want it to be this way, but we're about to ding. Get ready. Yep. Okay, let's cast it again. Let's see. So I went from 113.105 to 133. Still 105. Okay, so I no longer get armor class upgrades. And let's just finish off what I have left here. I, I think I'll actually go and get two more bone chips, just so I can... Ooh, so that one doesn't have an image associated with it. Okay, that's, that's actually perfect, because I can't turn in two at a time. I need at least four. Wow. While I'm here, I might as well explore the Paladin Guild. Oh, are you a merchant? You're not, okay. Are 
you a merchant? And what do you con to me? Apprehensive. I wonder if this guy still cons apprehensive after all that. Ah, screw it. Okay. This is the Paladin Guild. It's not as fleshed out as I would have liked if I were a dwarf paladin, but it beats the hell out of my little necro or cleric guild in Akanon. Now, the Abbey of Deep Musing, I think, well, this looks better than that, even. I mean, this is... It's big, and it looks very fancy, but there's not a lot to it, really. Um, it does go a little bit further back, but that guy up there is, like, the head guild master. Oh, this keyboard is driving me nuts. Dater Nightseer. He's the big way around here. Oop. Yeah, I didn't want to give him that. I want to sell that to a merchant that's not apprehensive. Yeah, and it, like this game did a good job, the developers, of like making, oh, you know, there's lots of doors to open in here, but there's nothing inside them. It's just kind of, I guess, lore. Like, oh, this is where each guildmaster sleeps. They each get their own bed in their own room. Okay, that's cool. A little nightstand, bureau, whatever, and a light. Oh, my sew's wearing off. Bummer. Um, but it's like a lot of space devoted to nothing. Like if you're a dwarf paladin, what are you really doing here? Other than that bone chip quest, maybe one or two other quests that aren't really that great. Let's just ask this guy, see if he's done any quests. I think he's AFK, where he's just lost in thought. I. I really had hoped that through all those turn-ins I would have gotten a lantern, because I think a lantern is one of the things you can get. I cannot believe level 5 was such a short thing. I mean, what kind of video is that going to be? It's going to be a real quick one. But hey, I said, I said that was what I was going to do. Maybe these... Oh, she's up to amiably now. Or was she amiably already? Let's see what Galea is, because... Because that's who I was really gaining faction with, I think. Okay, so this will be fine to sell to. So, since I, I got all those upgrades, I don't need any of this stuff anymore. Um, gosh, should I do my level 5 spells here? Or should I go back to Akamon? One thing that I can do right now is Scribe Gate. I think I'll go back to Akanon. I'll just keep recording. And I'll split this all up into three different videos. <laughs> Sounds insane. And I thought the level four video was going to be short. Okay. So instead of running all the way back, now I can do something really cool. I can cast a spell called Gate. What does Gate do? Uh, that's a cool looking cleric guild. I wonder if is that cooler than the Abbey of Deep Musing? I, I definitely can't throw my own crappy little guild into the conversation. Let's see what it looks like on the inside. I mean, it's it's not... It's not that great looking. If all these merchants weren't apprehensive, I would just buy my spells here. But because they are... Oh, is there anything in here? Ooh, okay. Two more, or one more. Guildmaster, cool. I don't remember if, if these guys have any quests. That guy certainly doesn't. But anyway, I'll, I'll be back here. Oh, you know what I'm gonna do? Before I gate. Okay, let me just show you what I was gonna do. I, I'm gonna get two more bunches before I gate, just so I have four to complete the turn in cycle. Where you're bound, you type in slash char, and it'll tell you where you're bound. Currently bound seen from the mountains. Well, I'm bound there. I never bound myself there or had anyone bind me there. I'm just bound there because every race has a starting bind point. And for gnomes, that starting bind point is in the seam from the mountains. You know what I might do while I'm here? This is the bank. So if I were to cast gate right now, I'll interrupt it. Oh, I thought ducking would interrupt. I didn't realize the server worked that way. If I were to cast bind or uh, gate right now, it would send me back to that exact spot in front of Akinon where I'm bound. Now, what I can do, oh, nine, nine plat should be enough to get my level five spells. What I can do 
once I hit level 14 on this character, or 12 if I was an ink caster, is I get a spell called Bind Affinity at that level. With that spell, I can change my bind spot to be wherever I want. Now, if you're not an ink caster or a wisdom caster, so I know this is monotonous, but the list of those classes, Cleric Druid Shaman, Wizard, Necromancer, oh, a fellow gnome, uh, Magician, Enchanter. Those are the seven classes that can change their bind point. Once they get that bind affinity spell, they can bind themselves anywhere in the game with very, very few exceptions, like Temple of Vishen, for example. If you're any other class, which you would broadly consider melee classes, you can only bind in city zones, and you can't even bind yourself. You have to rely on other players, like a cleric or a magician or whatever, a caster class, to bind you. And it can only be in city zones. So, like, as a cleric, I could bind myself right here. But if I was a warrior, I would have to get someone else to bind me inside Akanon. Or Kaladin. Or in any city, really. Um, they did end up adding a couple more bind spots for... Oh, these are green now. They did end up adding a couple more bind spots for melee characters around the world when Kunar came out, I think. But but not many. They're few and far between. So I just want to get two more bone chips, turn them in. And then I'll be done with this area. Then I'll gate back. And god, I guess this will end up being three different videos. The rest of level six I want to do in Greater Fate Archon Warkill in a group, hopefully. If they'll have me. And I'm already like, eh, half of one. <laughs> I look, I, I think I look a lot better. I'm already half of one orange bubble until level six. Boy, level five is just a blur there. Just a blur of turning in bone chips. Okay, I only need one more. This is a great newbie area. I think that they also had an idea. You can kind of tell by like how big each city is, how many players they predicted would end up picking that race. And also how like flushed out the newbie zone is. Well shoot, I might as well get eight. Um, I think that they had a pretty good idea that a lot of players would pick the worst. Because think about it, anything fantasy related, like Lord of the Rings, any of those old like Dungeons and Dragons, like. Dwarves are always a huge part. Dwarves and elves. Dwarves, elves, and orcs are always part of the equation. Interestingly, in this game, you can't be an orc, but there are orcs. I saw one earlier outside the list. Uh, what do I need now? Two more. Okay. It'd be great if I could just kill one sail and get two bone chips. Because I'm not getting experience from these guys anymore. Although, even at level four, I was getting, like, nothing from them. But turning in four will get me a decent little bit of experience. But I'll be turning in eight. <sighs> yeah, so th this newbie zone, I actually played a dwarf not too long ago, like when I was working on that lore video um just to kind of get in the character a little bit I, I played a dwarf on this server up to level eight i think but this is a much better newbie zone than steampunk mountains now i think steampunk mountains actually gets pretty good it it, it almost strikes me as like a, a great in class solo place and i i think that they probably thought anyone who's playing a gnome they're most likely going to be an in class oh well at least i got another wrist because you can kind of make that assumption just based on the starting stats. Like, when I was making this character, you saw it. The, uh, let's go a little faction here. Oh, I'll get this guy too. The, the gnome stats were really geared toward intelligence casters. All four of them. Maybe, or you could argue not enchanter because their charisma is so bad. But the wisdom stats were bad for clerics. The melee stats aren't great for warriors. I guess rogues are, rogues are rogues. It really doesn't matter what race you pick, in my opinion, for a rogue. You're going to max out your strength. Your backstab damage is going to be insane. But yeah, I think they figured, well, if anyone's going to be a gnome, they're probably going to be an incaster. And I think that Steampunk Mountains kind of reflects that. Like that magician I was talking about earlier, who was just destroying stuff with his pet. I mean, that's the kind of thing I couldn't do as a cleric. Uh, damn sure a level 4 gnome warrior isn't going to do that. Same with a rogue. Come on, I need one bone chip. Just give me a bone chip. Um, so I, I think that they, they did a good job of crafting the newbie zones based on probably what class they figured most people would be. And that's the impression that I get from uh, Steampunk Mountains is they thought there would be a lot of ink casters. Because if you go further out from those windmills I was at earlier, there's an area outside of these tunnels that I think most people call like Minotaur tunnels or something like that, that is so geared toward an ink caster with a pet. Like if you're a mage or a, a necro, like you're going to be there instead of Crushbone most likely because it's such easy experience. Your pet just destroys everything. 
It's great. But if you're if you're a cleric or warrior, you're not solo in there. Oh, I've got competition here. I I really don't need to be filming all this. This is not interesting to watch me get this tiniest little faction hit. I just want that one bone chip, and I know I'm not gonna get it from a goblin. I just noticed they have earrings. And bracelets. Oh, there's a there's a skill. Let me get him. Let me get him before he gets him. Yeah. Oh, here's another one. Perfect. I guess he's stealing this one from me. Haha, -ha, I got two. And I'm joking when I said stealing. If, if he had nuked this one, it wouldn't have been stealing. That's kind of, there's rules to this server, um, which I think are good in general. I mean, no rule set is perfect, but the rules in the server are if you attack it first, you get dibs on it. Um, oh, come on. I refuse to let any bone chips go to waste. What do I need now? One more still? Yeah. Okay, that's fine. I can get one more. Um, The exception to that rule is if you're in a dungeon and there's like a specific camp spot, then it gets a little fishier. It's like, well, who, who is camped there first? Not so much who engages first. And then there's the raid rules, which are all their whole different thing. None of that is going to be relevant on this character for quite a while. But if you if you plan on playing on this server, be prepared to know the rules. When in Rome. When in Norath. When on P99 Green. I just need one bone chip. I like this music too. I, uh, when I wanted, I tried to capture this music for my more video and it took me a while because I kept running and hearing it and then I would run somewhere where it stopped playing. So I eventually, I actually eventually just downloaded all the midis, but I caught that that song by standing in front of uh, Kaladin there. It's, it's kind of cool. Ooh, a human. There's many humans around here. Now, if I followed straight that way that I'm pointing with my arrow right now, I would eventually end up at a dock. And at that dock, a boat comes. And the boat that comes takes you to Freeport, which is the human city. One of two human cities. Humans are the only race in the game that have their, they have two cities. It's funny. I actually wonder how... Oh, come on. I refuse to have just one extra. Now I gotta get... And that guy's like trying to get as many stuff as possible, like the strategy. I, I don't blame him. I was talking about the strategy earlier. Um, but it's gonna make it harder to find these. Um, when I was talking earlier about like, oh, they probably thought this many people were gonna play Tauros and... This percentage might play elves. There's wood elves, dark elves, and high elves. And I always thought dark elves were the coolest race in the game. Okay, that's good. I only need one more. Come on, one more. Um, I wonder how many people they thought would play humans. Like, if you think about it, you just spent whatever this game cost when it first came out. 50 bucks, let's say. I think that's right. And there was a monthly fee associated with this game at first, too. I think it was $10 a month, and then it eventually went up to $12 a month. And then it eventually became free. Um, way down the road. But... And, and you did get your first month for free, but you still had to pay $50 to buy the game. Um, just laying the foundation for it, you just spent this money. At the time, this game was really tough to run. Perfect. This game was really tough to run on computers back then, because a lot of people were still on Windows 95. This game came out in 99. And you needed a certain amount of RAM. I think you needed a video card, or at least a really good processor for the time. Whatever that would have been back then. And what I'm trying to say is, you have to pay the money up front, you have to have a good enough computer for it, you had to have good enough connection because a lot of people were also on dial-up. It was a pain in the ass. You go through all that and you're all like hyped up. Like I remember a buddy of mine who introduced this game to me. He had this uh, Game Informer magazine, which had a series over several months because it was a once a month publication. I was more of an EGM kind of guy, but... Electronic Gaming Monthly, if you didn't know. Um, I still have a bunch of those magazines too, sitting in storage. I have some really good ones. I used to love... When that magazine came, I was like the most excited. Like I, I would look forward to getting home from school and I would check the mail every day hoping to see that little rolled up piece of plastic in the mailbox. And when it was the end of the month, no, when it was the end of the month, that's a cool name, Namki. And I was like, okay, it's the 28th of the month. Like the new EGM magazine should be here by now. And I came home and I was hoping it would be there and I checked the mail and it wasn't there. I was so disappointed. <laughs> I was like on the verge of tears. I was like, no, all I wanted to do was come home and read EGM. And then it would show up the next day or two days later or something like that. But you went through all that and you read the Game Informer special and you were all pumped for EverQuest. When you finally get into the game, do you really want to pick a human as your race? Like you don't, know, you don't really know anything about the different races or the different classes. You're just like, I just want to play. I want to play in this giant magical world with a bunch of other people. It's going to be awesome. Why would you pick a human? You're a human in real life. But I see the appeal of human at the same time. Like if you look at the stats, 
like again, if you're a new player, you don't even know what all those stats do. But you look at the human stats; they're like the most normalized average. I think they're all around eighty or seventy-five. Like even if you pick, whether it's like an ink cast casting class or a wisdom casting class, like your starting stats are all about the same. So they did make it so there was like sort of an advantage to being human, but also sort of just like no. The advantage was everything was kind of just. <gasps> yes, that's what I wanted. Oh, I wanted a large lantern. But look at that. Look at look at the improvement. Okay, dark, light, dark, light. No lantern, lantern. But anyway, back to my point. You pick a human. The advantage is you're not going to have any terrible stats like the gnome or the half elf, or like your charisma might be really low, or your wisdom might be really low. The disadvantage is you're not going to have any really high stats either. Like you're not going to be like the high elf cleric if you pick a human cleric. You're not going to have anywhere near as much wisdom. I am really glad I got that answer. So I can kind of see that a brand new player. Another upgrade. That one doesn't have a visual um, change to it on the outside of my character. I can kind of see the appeal of someone being like, eh, I'll just be a human because all the stats are kind of decent. But also the disadvantage of like, well, if I want to be a cleric, I see that the, the stats they have in green, which means the more important stats, are wisdom and whatever else, stamina, and like, oh, well, High elves are really good on, on wisdom. Might as well just pick one of those. But yeah, like when I first got this game, um, Kunark was already out. Like I got the game in July of 2000. Okay, I'm going to gate here before I do. I'll just okay. I got one more plat. 1.4 plat. Kunark was already out when I got the game, and when I first played the game, actually, my very first instinct, like, I mentioned that my buddy told me, all right, I'm gating for the first time, my buddy told me that I should be a barbarian shaman because of the faction that barbarians have, which is generally neutral around the world, and also the quote-unquote fun of a shaman, but I was like, eh, not really feeling it. When I first fired up the game, I picked a dwarf paladin as my, as my first class. Because I was like, it's an RPG. Fantasy. I want to be a... Uh, I want to be a... Something weird, you know? Something that I can't be in real life. And a barbarian is basically just like a really tall human. But I didn't last on that character. And I ended up... Like, the other class or race that really appealed to me at that age and at that level. Well, early in the game. Like, first exposure. Was Dark Elf. And, and that, to be honest, Dark Elf remains probably my favorite race in the game i thought trolls were really cool too but i hated the way they look when they ran they look great even with their big fat gut i'm not judging no body shaming here um but when they run they do this weird hunched over looking thing and i hated that 